Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, understanding pre-preg performance at millimeter wave frequencies. Now, here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, this is John Coonrod with Rogers Corporation, and I am a technical marketing manager. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about prepreg being used at millimeter wave frequencies. And as an example, I'm going to talk about uh, millimeter wave applications such as 77 gigahertz automotive radar because that particular application is uh, running and has been running in very high volume uh, for the last several years. And we've learned a lot from these type of applications. So to begin with, as this technology first evolved several years ago, the 77 gigahertz automotive radar, most of the circuits were multi-layer hybrid where the outer layer of the circuit is the uh, basically the RF layer and the layers below that are usually using uh, non-RF materials like FR4, or usually high TG FR4. And uh, those layers are there really to support things like ground planes and power planes and control circuits, things like that, that are not that sensitive to the RF performance. But copper layer one and two would be the signal and the ground plane for a microstrip or whatever the RF structure may be. So that was the common construction in the beginning. And then as time has gone on, and uh, the RF industry has learned more about this. We are now at the stage where we're getting more and more automotive radars at 77 gigahertz that have very high resolution. And to support that technology, the multi-layer actually has to have many more layers of RF materials. And that's the reason why some of these prepregs are now being called out and they need to have very good performance at these, RF, at these very high frequencies for millimeter wave. So let me go ahead and uh, start by showing you a picture of uh, some different circuit constructions and explain the, the concepts here. The top picture is actually uh, a good cross-sectional view of the circuit that's been used for many, many years uh, for 77 gigahertz automotive radar, where the top laminate is the RF laminate and the other laminates and prepreg below that are the FR4 prepregs and laminates. And uh, normally what it is on the top layer signal on cop copper layer one and the ground below is a microstrip structure or it could be ground to coplanar waveguide. So that's historically what we've seen in high volume for this millimeter wave application. Now as time has moved on and we've learned more, uh, there's a need for high resolution radars at these very high frequencies. And to support that, these circuits have to be more complex. So now you have more RF layers. So now I'm showing a picture on the bottom left that is RF laminate on top and probably still the same structure, microstrip or ground coplanar waveguide. And then copper layers two, three, and four actually will form a strip line structure. And now you can have uh, more utility for processing uh, RF signals. And then below that again is FR4, it's usually a high TG FR4 that is uh, very capable of uh, going through lead free and other demands for assembling the circuit. But these are two good uh, cross-sectional views of circuits and it does show you why a good prepreg uh, is needed now that has a very good millimeter wave performance. There are several things that the RF designer needs to consider for these prepregs at the uh, millimeter wave frequencies. And by the way, millimeter wave is defined as roughly 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz, so it's very high frequency. And for the prepregs, uh, there's a few things to keep in mind. One category would be printed circuit board fabrication. And on the printed circuit board fab side, uh, what would be interesting is a prepreg that has uh, properties that are very easy to process. And for prepreg or bond ply or any kind of bonding material, the process in the circuit fabrication that is most important would be lamination. And uh, assuming that you have a material, a prepreg or bond ply, that is capable of standard processing at most circuit fabricators, then uh, that's going to be good for circuit fabrication, good yields, things like that. Uh, in general, those parameters are usually around 350F to 400F for cure temperature and usually pressures around 200 to 400 PSI. So that's pretty common for most prepreg and bond plies used in the printed circuit board industry. Now the very low loss prepregs that could be used are a lot of times PTFE based and then to laminate those is a little bit uh, more difficult because really what you do is you melt them under pressure by using a fusion bond process. And in the past there had not been many circuit fabricators that had this process. More recently there's more and more bringing that on, but it is a more difficult process and usually a little more expensive. And then uh, finally, uh, getting a, um, a 
prepreg at millimeter wave frequencies and bonded all the materials together, you want to make sure that the CTE is well matched between the prepreg and the laminate materials. So whatever expansion or contraction you have as it heats and cools, that the prepreg is going to do the same thing as the laminate oil. Now on the RF side of things, of course you want to match the prepreg and dielectric constant and dissipation factor to the other materials surrounding it, the other laminates or prepreg. And uh, then also you'd want to make sure that the, again, the CT is well matched and that's more of a physical thing to make sure all the layers are moving the same as it heats and cools. And then finally, uh, the prepreg should have the same glass style as the laminate. And glass style could be open weave, could be spread weave. Uh, but it's usually a good idea to use spread weave at millimeter wave frequencies because of the glass weave effect. And spread weave glass actually will behave more like a plane of glass and you won't have those individual openings that open weave glass will have. And at very high frequencies such as millimeter wave, those openings can disturb the wave. So spread glass is a, uh, a big plus for any prepreg used at millimeter wave frequencies. So let me go ahead and show you some information about some prepregs that have been used and are used right now at millimeter wave frequencies. Here is a table of information of four different prepregs and bond plies that Rogers offers and you'll notice that we have quite a variety of thicknesses here. So as the RF engineer is deciding different thicknesses for different layers, uh, having these choices of different thicknesses will allow them a little more freedom to get the right thickness on the layer that they want. Now the top row is Speedwave 300P Prepreg. This is a material we've introduced to the market uh, a few years ago, I believe, and it has quite a uh, variety of um, available thicknesses, 2 mil, 2.5, 3, and you can see that here all the way up to 5.5 mil thick. Now also with this prepreg, you have the availability of a prepreg at the same thickness, have an open weave glass or spread weave. Spread weave is a little more expensive, however, at millimeter wave frequencies, that is uh, highly suggested to use a spread weave glass to minimize or eliminate the uh, glass weave effect. Also, this material, this prepreg, the Speedway 300P, is uh, formulated and does perform very well for circuit processing, so it is friendly to the circuit fabrication process. Now below there is another prepreg, the RO 4450T prepreg, which is very well matched to any of the RO 4000 laminates and can be used with a lot of other materials as well. And you can see there we also offer uh, a quite a range of thicknesses, again to help the RF engineer build up thicknesses that they would want in certain areas. And 2.5, 3mm, 3.5, all the way up to 6mm thick. Dielectric constant 3.3, dissipation factor 0.004. All of these prepregs have a spread glass, so no problem with the glass weave effect, and they are also very friendly to the circuit fabrication process. Now the 2929 is a bond ply, and that is a unsupported, so that has no glass uh, reinforcement layer. So the 2929 is an unsupported bond ply, and uh, because of having no glass, you have no worry with the glass weave effect, so that's good. However, this does require a little bit higher lamination temperature than the norm, and most of the circuit fabricators can reach the temperature, but it's still something you'd probably want to talk up to your fabricator about just to make sure they're capable of processing this. On our Rogers Technology Support Hub website, you can find the fabrication parameters for every one of these prepregs that will show you the time of temperature, the, the uh, dwell, the, uh, the rate of rise, all the different critical properties for lamination. So the 2929 DK about 2.9, DF 0.003. And then the last material is a bomb ply, Extreme Speed RO1200 bomb ply, available in 2.5, 3, 4, and 5 mil thicknesses. This is also non-woven glass bonding material. Uh, this material has the lowest loss, as you can see, 0.0012. And actually, I've measured a lot of this material, and I think it's lower than that. But that's what we're stating in the data sheet as a worst-case scenario. Anyway, uh, this is not glass woven, so you have no glass weave effect to worry about. It is a fusion bonded uh, type of bonding material, so that means you're going to have to talk to the fabricator to make sure they're able to do this kind of a process. And again, there's more and more fabricators out there able to do fusion bonding, but it's just a note that you want to keep in mind. So for fabrication in general, the Extreme Speed RL1200 uh, can be a little more demanding, and it's just uh, a good idea to talk to your fabricator about it if you would like to use that material. 
Depending on how the multilayer circuit is built, the prepreg may have a very significant influence on the millimeter wave performance, and it may not. But normally it will, and you can see in the, the cross-sectional views I showed a few slides back that uh, the prepreg really can matter a lot. So keeping the prepreg properties in mind is uh, very important. And just to give you an example of the performance of these prepregs at millimeter wave frequencies, I've done an experiment, actually multiple experiments, using the same core material and building a very simple strip line circuit, three layer circuit, where you have ground, signal ground as the cross sectional view. And I have a layer of prepreg in there and a foil copper on top that's laminated to it, and then the laminate below. The laminate is 5 mil CLTE MW and it's using rolled copper. Rolled copper is very smooth, so it's going to have very low losses, and the CELT-MW is formulated for millimeter wave and performs extremely well. So what I did was make several of the strip line, single-ended transmission line circuits exactly the same, and the only difference being the prepreg that was used to build the circuit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Shown here is an assertion loss curve, and it is showing four different strip line circuits that were made, the exact same design. All of them are using the differential length method, which means that I have two sets of circuits for each one of these curves. One circuit is short in length, one's long in length. And by subtracting the results of S21, I can get the losses in dB per unit length. In this case, on the y-axis, you see that's loss in dB per inch. And the lowest loss curve is the blue curve, which is the extreme speed RL1200 bomb ply. And uh, you can see that's got very good loss. 1.5 dB per inch at 70 gigahertz for a strip line circuit. That's really good. Maybe the best I know of. Uh, and then uh, below that is the gray curve. That's the Speedwave 300P. What's interesting is that also has very good performance at millimeter wave out at 70 gigahertz, right around 2 dB per inch. That's considered very good. Again, that's strip line circuit, single ended, and the Speedwave 300P is actually friendly to the circuit fabrication process, whereas the RL1200 Extreme Speed Bomb Ply, that's a little more difficult. It most certainly can be done and is done, uh, but still, the Speedwave is going to be a little bit easier, actually a lot easier for the circuit fabricator. It's really formulated to be friendly in the circuit fabrication process, and you can see it's got very good behavior at these millimeter wave frequencies. The yellow curve below that is the RL4450T 4450 prepreg, and you can see that also has uh, insertion loss very similar to the Speedwave 300P, uh, maybe just a little bit uh, lower, but not too bad. And uh, that's also very friendly to, for, for circuit fabrication. It's really formulated to be uh, very compatible with any of the 4,000 laminates. However, in this case, we did use it with a non-4,000 laminate, the 5 mil CLT MW with rolled copper, and we got very good results. So you can use this prepreg with other laminates than 4,000. It's just that it's a very good match to the 4,000. Um, and then the last curve, the green curve, that's the strip line circuit built using the 2929 bomb ply. And again, you're getting an insertion loss about 2.5, around 66 gigahertz, and that's also considered very low loss. So you can see these prepreg materials uh, perform very well at these higher frequencies. And you can also uh, get an idea of how they do for circuit fabrication, where the blue curve is a little more difficult, but it's also the lowest loss. So in conclusion, Rogers has many different prepregs that can be used and are used at millimeter wave frequencies. And these prepregs support uh, multi-layers of uh, many layer counts and mixing of different materials, a hybrid. So uh, please, when you're looking at millimeter wave designs, consider these different prepregs and realize that we do have offerings of many different thicknesses. So it does allow the RF engineer to pick and choose what they need for adjusting thicknesses in different levels of the multi-layer circuit. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.